By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some more old school magic for you. I am playing against Kobus from the Netherlands and he's bringing an ATOC robot stack to the table. It's quite interesting. There are some different choices than perhaps you're used to. So it's definitely worth sticking around for the deck deck section. And I'm also bringing a brand new deck to the table, something I call a holiday deck. Uh, it's called Flying Elementals. And the reason I'm calling it a holiday deck is because all the cards are foreign. So I've got French cards, I've got um, Italian cards, I've got, do I have Spanish cards? Anyway, I've got all the languages in here, uh, German, definitely. Uh, but that's maybe something for later in the deck deck section. But I've, I've had a lot of fun brewing this deck. So I'm really looking forward playing with it for the first time here on Timmy Talks. Uh, talking about all that, uh, if you want to go straight to the action, straight to the games, I know some of you do. All you have to do is check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. You can click on the timestamp MTG Games. That will take you straight to the gaming action so you can skip the deck deck section. As for here, we're going to continue with the deck decks and I'm going to start with the deck of Kobus, Atok Robots. And here we see the deck of my opponent Kobus that I've called Atok Robots for the simple reason that we have a full play set of Atoks and we've got seven robots. We've got four Suchis and three Trikes. Now, this is uh, another take on the Atok decks and we've seen quite a lot of them. I've also built a few. It's they're quite nice to experiment because you got a few different choices to make. And when we're looking at this, uh, deck list, the first thing I noticed, it is kind of budget friendly. And I'm saying kind of because remember, this is crazy old school, right? Old school reality where you call a deck budget that's actually still, you know, very expensive to make. But for budget, uh, I mean, for old school, this is actually considered budget because it is a single color. So you don't need any of those expensive duels. There's no power in here. So that's something. And for example, the Triskelion, the nice thing about Trike, yes, it's very expensive antiquities, but you can get a cheap reprint and a cheap reprint is also in this deck. Now that's where, for example, for Suchi, it gets a bit more problematic because it's not been reprinted. But okay, that's kind of the financial side to this build. But I just wanted to point that out. So if you're thinking about um, starting with old school and you're kind of looking for budget options, decks like these are actually kind of budget friendly. Um, looking at what my opponent wants to do, I guess it's pretty clear, right? This is really what red is all about, direct damage and finding as many ways to deal damage as quickly as possible, right? Four chains, four bolts, that means eight times three, 24 points of damage purely with bolts alone. Talking about bolts, he's got a lot of cards in his deck that basically do the same as a lightning bolt. For example, Black Fist turn one is almost a guaranteed extra lightning bolt in your deck. You know, that's also how I look at the vice when I'm playing with the vice in a deck like these, uh, like this. Um, Triskelion, I know it's six to cast, but essentially it's just a very expensive lightning bolt. And you may think, okay, why would you put a Triskelion in with the idea that it's an extra lightning bolt? When you're playing with this much direct damage, that, that trike that then hits the board in turn four or turn five, whenever, um, can actually mean the last points of damage that you deal to your opponent because this, this deck is aggressive. It can be more aggressive, but this deck is definitely aggressive. So a trike uh, that can instantly kill your opponent for six, that doesn't sound that bad anymore, does it? Because you put the trike on the board and you've got a guaranteed three points of damage to any target. And that can also be your opponent. And that can be a huge problem for me. Actually, when I'm looking at this deck and this particular matchup, I think the black vice is gonna be an issue because my deck is not fast. And if you can already deal six damage with, a vi with his vice, then I'm down to 14. And you may think 14 is a healthy life total. Actually, it's not when you're playing against de a deck like this. What usually happens when I'm playing against a deck like this is I take some damage at the start. You know, okay, let's, let's stick to that 14 life total. I'm on 14. I start to slowly stabilize. In that process, I take some more damage, go down to nine or something. Then at a certain point, I'm finally stabilized and my opponent draws into an expel. For example, they disintegrate or finds those final points of direct damage with chains and bolts and I still die. So it's really difficult to kind of play against these, these aggressive decks because you need to find a way to, to stop bleeding and at the same time maybe gain some life back, which is not in every deck. There are not a lot of decks in old school that have ways to gain life. You do see that life gain is, is becoming a little bit more popular and I think it's, it's due also due to 
to these decks that are just so aggressive. Now talking about aggressiveness, um, Kobus has made some interesting choices in this deck. For example, he could have played with Ball Lightning. I'm always thinking mono red, ball lightning, it's really a creature that I, I love to see and love to play with. But the thing is with ball lightning, you know, the 6-1 trampler for 3 red, you don't get a lot of value. So I think Kobus here made the decision to go for 4 Suchis instead, which is quite interesting. And the Suchi is something, it's a more versatile creature, right? It, it's a 4-4, it works against the Abyss. Also, you can feed it to the Atok, you get 4 mana. And he's also playing with GM Day Tome. So I always love it when you're in the situation where your opponent tries to kill your Suchi in combat, you can feed it to the Atok, up the Atok with plus two, plus two, and at the same time, use the four mana to do something useful. Um, in this case, to use it to draw a card with your Jam Day Tome. That's kind of like the dream scenario, right? Another way of using the Suchi is you attack with your creatures. Let's say he doesn't have any blockers, just for the sake of this of this um, uh, example. Uh, so you attack with the Suchi, he's got no blockers, you deal four damage. Then in your second main, you sack the Suchi to your Atok, you get four mana from the Suchi and you use that in an X spell, for example, to disintegrate, to deal just tons of damage to your opponent and basically kill him, right? So, I mean, there are some tricks with the Suchi and for me, that makes the choice for Suchi actually kind of interesting. Um, like I said, I really love Bull Lightning because when I'm thinking about red, you know, Bull Lightning, Chain Lightning, a Lightning Bolt, this just sounds like a lot of fun. It, actually, it is a lot of fun to do if you do it sometimes, you know what I mean? Um, but with Suchi, it's more tactical. So I do find that a very interesting decision. Talk about tactical. One of the things that I think I would change in this deck, but again, that's probably because I've played my fair share of tournaments in old school is um, two Stone Rain. Stone Rain is a very good card, I'm not saying that, but in red, you also have a card for the same casting cost, and you know where I'm, where I'm getting at probably, that's Blood Moon. There are two Blood Moons here in the side. I would probably add two more Blood Moons in the main and maybe take Stone Rain out of it, maybe take an Earthquake out in the sideboard and perhaps a Shatter out so that I have some space for those two Stone Rains in the sideboard if I really want to board him in when I'm facing a mono color deck and actually Kobus today you are facing another mono color deck so in, in for this matchup Stone Rain is the better option but in general when you're playing uh, against other players in old school they tend to have a very greedy mana base and they want to play with a lot of colors splashing those restricted cards right and then it really pays off to pl uh, play with Blood Moon and one of the things I love about Blood Moon I mean, it takes care of Maze of If, it takes care of uh, Mishra's Factory, it takes care of so many, like Library of Alexandria. So it's not just um, a card against a greedy mana base or against a multiple color deck, it also works against all those special lands that you see a lot in um, in old school. You know, it's a fact, you, you need weapons against, uh, against non-basic lands in old school. That's just a fact. So Blood Moon can do that can do a great job. And I know what, maybe what you're thinking when you hear me saying this, you're thinking, yeah, but what about his own Mishra's Factories? Well, it's always the question, who are you hurting more, your opponent or yourself? And I think with the Blood Moon and this specific deck, you're definitely hurting your opponent more because, hey, you're playing Mono Red, you can still play everything out. Okay, and maybe it means your Mishra's Factory becomes a non-basic mountain. Fine, you know, fine. It doesn't really, matter that much you know let let your opponent deal with the blood moon and then you get your mistress factory back that's also not a bad deal is it so that's the only change i think i well the only one of the changes i you could consider making let me put it that way but i'm really liking this deck and i'm, I'm actually liking to see variation so i think Kobus, it's great that you have chosen to go for a stone rain and then we can see how that works out i also think ank of mishra by the way in this deck works really well two to cast artifact Whenever you play a land, it deals two damage to whoever played it, right? To the controller. So interestingly here, that goes for Kobus, but it also goes for me. If I play a land, I also get two damage. And that is a very old school combination that I'm seeing here. Black Vice and Ank of Mishra, right? Black Vice says uh, you, you get a damage for each card over four in your upkeep. So if I've got five cards in hand, I take a damage. Um, and then Ank of Mishra, so I don't want to take any damage from Vice anymore, right? That's the idea. So I want to play out cards but Ank of Mishra is gonna hurt me for playing out lands. So I'm kind of in a catch 22, which is, is what I like. It's good to put your opponent in a situation where he doesn't want to be in, right? Then you know, when you hear your opponent moaning, you know you're doing something right. And I think Ank of Mishra Vice, for me, is definitely one of those, 
morning moments, especially the deck that I'm playing with because I'm not playing with any power as well. This is a powerless match. Okay, this is the deck of Kobus. Now let's take a look at my deck, Flying Elementals. And here we see my deck, Flying Elementals. And this deck just puts a smile on my face because uh, you have to understand, probably like, I don't know where you're from when you're listening to this, but I'm here in the Netherlands. I'm sitting here in my little study and I've been kind of cooped up for a year because of all the, the pandemic regulations. And luckily, you know, I'm healthy. My family's healthy. That's the most important thing. So I'm not complaining, but I was trying to look for a way to, okay, how can I still go on holiday when I'm not allowed to go on holiday? And that's when this idea hit me to build a holiday deck. It's kind of been in my mind for a while, but now I really pushed through and I finally assembled all the pieces. And this is my first holiday deck. Cause yes, I will be making more, don't worry. Uh, as you can see, this is also mono red, just like my opponents, but it's completely different. This is another ballpark. So I'm working more um, with on the controlling side, I guess you could say, maybe the combo side, because what I want to do with this deck, it's built around Gravity Sphere. So Gravity Sphere is this enchant world from Legends that says everybody, everything loses flying, right? So if everything loses flying, um, then I want to use my flying carpet. So I'm playing with flying carpet, which I think is just an absolutely hilarious, cool, flavorful card that doesn't see a lot of play, I understand, but it's just great to play with it. A flying carpet, two and tap, you can gift target creature flying. So I've called this flying elementals, okay? Now does it start, the coin starts to drop, right? So I'm playing gravity sphere, nothing can fly. I'm playing flying carpet. Then I'm putting my fire elemental or my earth elemental on the flying carpet. <laughs> right? How cool is that? A burning elemental on a carpet. It's just funny. And the earth elemental, I mean, it's like a sumo wrestler. It's, it's huge. And you're making, you make that fly. I think if you accomplish that as a wizard, then for me, you're an A-class wizard. If you can do that, you know, you're one of the best wizards in the, in, in the Dominaria universe. Definitely. So anyway, so we're trying to put my earth elemental, fire elemental on a carpet. And because it's the only thing that has flying, it's basically unblockable, right? And that's the way to kill my opponent. Now I do realize that, I mean, this deck, like I said, takes some time. And because it's it's powerless, I've decided to go for Felwer Stones for the needed mana ramp. I'm also looking into getting a foreign uh, soul ring. They're kind of expensive. So I'm trying to wheel and deal, trying to make some deals here and there because I think a soul ring would be really good in this particular deck. So I'm playing with four uh, a Felwer Stones, so two to cast. And then you can tap and it can produce any color mana that your opponent can produce. So in this case, it's going to be more mountains, right? If I looked at the deck of Kobus, but that's absolutely fine. So this is going to hopefully give me the needed ramp to kind of ramp into some creatures quickly. Now to make sure I don't die while trying to set up this whole thing, because it's kind of mana intense. I'm playing with four wall of stones. So I'm hoping that the wall of stones can kind of keep my opponent from my back. Now, another thing that I've got going with my gravity sphere is Al Abra's Carpet, which is pretty cool. It's one of those cards from Legends where I think maybe they wanted to put it in Arabian Nights, although I don't know. It looks, it really looks and feels like an Arabian Nights card, doesn't it? But again, it's the carpet theme. So I've got flying carpet to put my creatures on a carpet, but as a wizard, I also want to fly. I also like flying, you know? What about the cool fire elemental gets to fly and I'm the wizard who summoned it, cannot fly? That will not stand. So. What I decided to do is put Al Abra's carpet in. What it does, five to cast, five and taps. It's super, it's super expensive. You literally, as a wizard, go on a carpet, which means that ground creatures cannot harm you. So gravity sphere, it makes all the creatures of my opponent ground creatures. Al Abra's carpet puts me on the carpet. That means I'm basically invincible. I know, I know, small side note, I can still die to direct damage. And yes, my opponent is playing with, I don't know, zillion direct damage cards, but at least the ATOC cannot harm me when I'm on the carpet. So that's that's a very soothing thing to know. And uh, because I'm expecting to take a lot of damage, I've also added some plan Bs into this deck. And one of the main plan Bs, I guess, is Mirror Universe, right? So six to cast. Um, and then um, you can sacrifice Mirror Universe and you can switch life totals. It's a very unique uh, ability. And um, I think it's one of the coolest cards in old school actually. So it's really cool. And I also play with Sword of the Ages and uh, Sword of the Ages, it's also six to cast. So there are a lot of like high casting cost things in this deck, but I just want to do fun stuff, right? So 
sort of the edge is what it does. Uh, it, also, it, it comes into play tapped, right? So it also takes a whole turn before you can use it, just like Mirror Universe, actually. And then it untaps, and then you can tap and sacrifice it. And you can also sack an X amount of creatures, for example, let's say two Earth Elementals. And then you deal damage to any target equal to their power, so their combined power. So two Earth Elementals, that would make eight damage. And I can deal that eight damage to a creature, but also to an opponent. So my idea is, hopefully I can bash into my opponent with my Elementals a few times. And then, you know, when he's got the defenses all set up, I can use my... Um, my Sword of the Ages to kind of deal those final points of damage. And with final points, I'm talking about eight, so it's quite a lot, actually. But I think I think it's pretty cool. Remember, Fire Elemental is even bigger, right? It's a 5-4. So if you've got two Fire Elementals and a Sword of the Ages, you can just deal 10 damage, and you don't have to worry about, you know, does he have blockers, whatever. You can just deal 10 direct points of damage. Okay, so um, this is my deck. It's not completely finished yet. Like I said, I'm looking for a soul ring. I'm also thinking about uh, changing the wall of stones with wall of fires because I think wall of fire is also cool and it works better with sword of the ages and it can actually kill something that it blocks. So I'm not, it's a process, right? It's a process. Oh, and I'm really excited about playing with falling star. This is the first time I'm playing with falling star here on the channel. So I'm really looking forward to Flip me to Falling Star. So hopefully I get to do that in this matchup. Okay, um, this is all I've got to say about the deck tech section. Let's go to the games. Game number one. Here we go. Kobus, my opponent, sitting on the left. I'm sitting on the right. Let's see who is on the play. And oh, Vice turn one. I talked about it in the deck tech. This is painful for me. So early Vice. And uh, we're playing without sideboards, by the way, for this matchup, for the simple reason that I don't have a sideboard yet for my uh, Flying Elementals deck. And there is a Felwer Stone, so at least I get to empty my hand a little bit, but I'm already on 14, taking six damage from the Vice. There is a Suchi. Hopefully I can find a Wall of Stone, or this game is going to end very, very fast. Tapping four, what can I do here? Clay Statue. 3-1 from Antiquities, 2 to regenerate the statue, but as you can see, I don't have any mana to do so. And then the question arises, am I going to take the 4 or chum block with the statue? Perhaps the latter, I'm already on 12, attacking here, looking at my hand, trying to decide what to do, taking the damage or chum blocking the Suchi. And one of the reasons here is I'm thinking, if he's got a bolt or a chain, okay, I'm taking the risk here to go to eight because if my opponent has a bolt or a chain, he can take care of the clay statue that way because I don't have any mana to regenerate. Deciding not to block, going down to seven, five in hand, having to pass turn here. That is bad news. I really was hoping for a wall of stone. That could really help. There's a chain lightning going down to four. Or is he playing it on my clay statue and I have to regenerate and then he can attack with the Suchi? And I'm actually sending it back. So tapping two to send it back to my opponent and there it's a bolt going to one. Uh-oh. Interesting here. If he would have bolted my... Yeah, now I'm dead because of the vice. Okay, so it is lethal. Uh, what I wanted to say is if he decided to bolt my clay statue, I would have to regenerate it taps and then he could have attacked with the Suchi for four so kind of do the extra point of damage as well anyway super super quick game uh let's hope that game number two is a little bit more exciting but uh definitely well done Koba shows the strength of your brew game number two so let's hope uh that um yeah I can I can show you guys kind of a game because uh yeah that game one wow that went so quick and like I said the the vice is just really really difficult for my deck to play against also because I don't have any uh, any shatter so I guess we really need to go and find some uh, some shatters for this deck but at least now I'm on the play and uh it looks like my opponent took a mulligan goes down one card there's a soul ring for him turn one so that's a pretty good start he can start ramping up there is a relic barrier and actually those relics they also work very well against artifacts not against the vice of course so in his upkeep I'm tapping down his soul ring. 
so that at least he cannot play out, for example, a Suchi turn two. There he's playing the Atoc. Let's see what I can do, another mountain. Again, a Wall of Stone would be really handy, tapping down the Sol Ring again and just passing turn here. Probably gonna swing in with the Atoc, just dealing a damage here. First, there's an Ankh of Mishra. And actually not attacking, just passing turn. Probably because of that uh, Mishra's factory I have open there. There is a clay statue. And of course, taking two damage from the Ankh of Mishra, going down to 18. And he also taking a damage here from his own Ankh, two damage actually, going down to 18 as well. There is a bolt, probably, yeah, on the statue. Yeah, that's a difficult thing with clay statue. And look at that again, not attacking with the Atok. I guess this time he kind of forgot. But I'm taking whatever I can take. I know it's always a race against these uh, direct damage decks, so. And again, not doing anything, just passing turn here. This is not ideal. I was really hoping for a wall of stone. There is a Suchi. And my opponent this time not attacking because of the factory. Taking two more damage, going down to 16. Will we see an elemental? Yes, Earth Elemental. This is what my deck wants to do, right? Play out those big beefy elementals. So this is a 4-5. So it's a really good blocker against uh, the 4-4 Suchi. So at least I've got some defenses up. And it looks like I'm... Oh, I'm actually not using the Relic Barrier. Of course, I've got the Relic Barrier also to tap the Suchi down. So that's quite interesting. Koba is going to 16 as well, playing out another land. So at least this game too is, uh, is way more interesting than... Um, than the first game we looked at. Tapping six for a trike. That is interesting because now he can swing in theory with the Suchi, although it probably will tap down the Suchi when he wants to declare combat. Exactly, tapping down the Suchi and passing turn here. Could have attacked, of course, with the Atok, create some kind of strange situation where I have to block and choose what to do, but that didn't happen. Tapping five again. Five is kind of the sweet spot for my deck. Ooh, interesting. Pyrokinesis, I think is the name of this card. So it deals four damage and I can divide that damage any way I want to. I think in this case, I'm gonna put it all on the trike because it's just such an annoying creature. So killing the trike in response, of course, Kobus is taking off the counters, dealing three damage to me directly. So I'm ending up on 13 here. And that is so difficult with that trike because even if you can get rid of it like I'm doing right now, you still take damage, and you just don't want to do that when you're playing against uh, against a direct damage red player, right? You just don't want to take any extra damage because, I mean, yes, I kind of stabilize now, but oh, what is he gonna do? Both of the factories are gonna swing in with the Atok, tapping down the Suchi when declaring combat, attacking here. What can I do? Blocking with the Earth Elemental. It looks like I'm blocking the Atok. And he's sacking Ankh of Mishra and his Mishra's factory to the Atok. That means the Earth uh, Elemental here dies. I'm going to go down to 11, playing out another Atok here from Kobus. Ooh, I'm on 11. This is not looking good. I need at least another Elemental, a Wall of Stone, something. Ooh, this is nice. Falling Star. Okay, we're going to flip here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And uh, I'm actually going to flip on the two Atox. So I'm going to put this in slow-mo. Getting ready for the flip. I think I'm going to flip on both of the Atox, right? And uh, the way Falling Star works, it kind of works like in Chaos Orb is in. You got to flip it from one uh, foot. And that's about you know 30 centimeters, 33 centimeters. Um, and then uh, whatever target it hits, it deals three damage. And... You can put it in a way that you can, in theory, hit uh, two targets at the same time. Uh, I mean, uh, six targets, actually, six creatures in the same time, if you have, like, the optimal flip. Uh, what I do want to make as a side note is that the cards cannot overlap. So you kind of see me putting the Atox here in a way that they don't overlap. So let's take a look here. And here we go. Boom. It's my first Falling Star flip on the channel. So I'm, like, super happy that I, uh, I hit both targets. Killing two Atox with one stone. And the difficult thing here for my opponent is if he wanted to sack something, he had to actually do that um, before uh, the flip, right? So upon uh, me casting the Falling Star, 
He can respond by sacking artifacts and making his Aatox bigger. That's an option. Uh, oh, I love this play. I love this play from Kobus here. Playing a Wheel of Fortune. Very, very cool. And what's now difficult for Kobus, by the way, because I also played another Relic Barrier afterwards. Those Relic Barriers are super annoying for him because they tap down, uh, can tap down his Mishra's Factories if he wants to attack with them. They can tap down his Suchis. Uh, but now he's got a full hand again, a full grip of cards. If he finds like a Vice, that would be really bad for me. And animating the factory here so I can respond by tapping down both of his creatures. There is an Ang of Mishra, at least not a Vice. Good news for me. And uh, ooh, showing my flying carpet there. Haven't seen any Gravity Spheres yet, by the way. No Gravity Sphere flying carpet. That's kind of the idea of the deck, right? Taking two more damage. Those angst are just really difficult to deal with. And playing another Relic Barrier, but that's not going to help against the Ang of Mishra. Wow, I'm actually attacking, dealing damage. Look at me go here. <laughs> Well, at least I'm okay. I'm, it looks like I'm a little bit in the driver's seat here, so that kind of feels good to be honest. Um, I am on nine though, and I lost my mirror universe uh, with that wheel of fortune, which is kind of unfortunate because I was hoping to trade lives at a certain point. Although, although Kobus is also on thirteen, so it's not. It wouldn't have been the right time to do it. So tapping down his soaring in response, he uses the soaring mana to animate his mistress factory. Stripping my factory. Actually, that's pretty good business for Kobus here. And he's looking at his hand. I wonder what he has. Perhaps, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fearing his direct damage because I'm already on nine. So tapping down both of his artifacts with my Relic Barriers. Those Relic Barriers are really an old star for this game. Tapping five, exactly. Here we go, Fire Elemental. Ooh, hopefully I can swing in for five next turn. That would set him back to six. That would be kind of nice, actually. I wonder if that happens. Another factory. That could be a little problematic. And oh, he played a lance. So it's going anti nine, of course, because the factory is a lance. It's going anti nine. So we're both on nine. I'm liking this game so far. It's much more exciting than game number one. Ooh, Disintegrate on the Fire Elemental, I guess. Disintegrate for four. Remember, Fire Elemental being a 5-4. And it is removed from the game. Kobus is ruthless. So I'm tapping down his Suchi. And I guess the factory was animated. Um, I can swing in here for two. I guess that's a good thing to do. No, I'm not doing that. Maybe I should have just taken this window, playing another Fire Elemental instead. I mean, it's not a bad decision, but I mean, he's on nine and if we could just swing in. Because I'm, if he has direct damage, he's just going to kill this again. On the other hand, if he uses direct damage on my creatures, he's not using it on me, which I think is a good thing. And tapping down the soaring again and in response, Kobus is using the mana to animate his two Mishra's factories. And uh, wants to go into combat, tapping down his Suchi and his Mishra's Factory. Still has one Mishra's Factory open. Playing another land, going to seven. Oh, another Disintegrate. Oh, I just need, I just need a little bit more luck. And he's attacking, of course, with that Factory. Going down to seven. If one of those... Fire Elementals could kind of stick to the board and I could deal some damage. It's not happening though. We're both on seven. What am I going to do? I've still got three Relic Barriers. The problem, of course, is that standing still is basically losing against Gobus's deck because he's going to draw into more direct damage. Maybe that's kind of something I'm discussing right now. I can swing in here for two. Am I doing it? I mean, if I do, I'm also giving an opening to Gobus here because he's got three Mishra's Factories. It's kind of insane. And when, I, when he animates them and I tap them down in response, he can pump the one factory that I cannot tap down. And that means I would take four damage, go down to three. Ooh, I'm going down to five with another. Oh, this is so risky. What am I playing for six here? Oh, nice. Is this, oh, what's the name of this card again? I think it's Earth Says Adventure. It's six mana to cast. It's a four, four. And um, I can give it, you can... Pay zero and give it minus one, minus one. And then you can give it, I think, first strike, flying, trample, all those abilities. And I 
think it's in the deck because, or actually I know it's in the deck because it works really well with Gravity Sphere, right? You've got Gravity Sphere takes away flying and with Urza's Avenger, you can, um, you can give it flying. And uh, my opponent, by the way, is kind of looking up this card. <laughs> I don't blame you, Kobus. It doesn't see a lot of play. I did see, I did see it when I played against Noobcon, um, against this player. I think on Instagram is called Pixel MTG, um, and he played with Urza's Adventure in a, in a deck with Gravity Sphere and Moats. I mean, that was just super cool. And he also played with Gabriel Angel Fire. If you don't know what that card is, look it up. It's it's a super cool card. Anyway. Get back to this game. I'm on five. Kobus is on seven. And I'm kind of, yeah, crossing my fingers here, hoping that I don't see any more direct damage because he can just fry me, right? He's got enough mana. If he draws into, you know, a Fireball or, or, or another Disintegrate. Although, I mean, how many Disintegrates was he, was he playing in his deck? He already played out two. So using all the Relic Barriers to tap everything, and now he's attacking with a 4-4 Mistress Factory, blocking it on my 4-4, so we're basically trading. I think this is not a bad trade for me. So now I can actually attack him for 2 that he goes down to 5. I'm seeing possibilities. I should really swing in here. Or do I have something else in hand? Do I have like an Earth Elemental or something else? So again, we're having a discussion. Maybe I'm pouring my heart out here saying what kind of difficult choices I have to make. But this is really an exciting match. This is the kind of magic you want to see, right? That it's really exciting for both players. And I'm animating it. And now I wonder, okay, no lightning. Yes, no lightning bolt, dealing two damage here. So he's also on five, both players on five life. And I guess I'm just passing turn here. And uh, probably just have a handful of flying carpets. That just kind of sounds like a Timmy hand. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What is he going to do there? Tapping too much. Oh, there's the trike. There's the trike. So that's that guaranteed three points of damage that he talked about in the deck deck. And there he goes, animating everything. This trike. Oh, man. It's such a problem. Chain lightning. And now I'm dead because of the trike. Ah. Oh. Oh, showing him the fireball. I almost won. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, I was doing the math, right? I just I missed one, one mana. One more mana, and I could have killed Kobus. But, of course, that Ang of Mishra was just such a big pain in the... Oh, man. What a nice, nice game number two. And the good news is we also played a game number three, so... If you want to stick around, we're going to play that game right now. But wow, this game too. Thank you, thank you, Kobus. Fantastic magic here. But um, it's not completely over yet. I've lost the match, but maybe maybe I can get a win in game number three. Let's take a look at game three. Game number three, the final game here. So I'm two games down already. So Kobus, you've got this one. But maybe, maybe I can get the game three in. That second game was very, very close. And there's a Mistress Factory by Kobus. And I'm also playing a Factory. And it looks like I'm passing turn here. I just feel like I need a little bit of luck, right? It's so hard to play uh, against a deck that has so many ways to just uh, deal damage out of nowhere. So there's a Mana Volt. It's actually kind of scary. And there is a Chain Lightning, so at least not a Suchi. Could have went Mana Volt and then into Suchi, that didn't happen. So that's some good news for me, I guess. But there is a Chain Lightning putting me down on, on 17 here. Passing turn, finding another mountain. Hey, Wall of Stone, finally! We didn't see Wall of Stone at all, by the way. I mean, Wall of Stone is, is kind of a big deal in my deck because um, it's an 08, so it's a great blocker and it kind of gives me the time I need to do stupid stuff. So, Wall of Stone, don't underestimate it. So, at least now I can block the ATOC, you know, without worrying. I think I think Wall of Stone in this actually matchup, in this matchup is actually pretty good. It's not too bad. And uh, there goes Kobus again, taking his turn. Paying one red, another chain. Of course, slowly dying to the direct damage here. Going down to 14, two chains to the dome. 
And uh, what can I do? I mean, I don't, I, it's, it's nice I've got the wall of stone, but I need to find a way to put some pressure on, hopefully finding a land. And because of that Felwar, I'm, in, I'm able to turn, to play out maybe uh, an elemental turn early. Gravity Sphere, okay. Gravity Sphere doesn't do too much against a deck of Cobas because he's not playing with any flyers. So he doesn't really care about Gravity Sphere. Although with Flying Carpet, I can still make the combo. Ooh, this is really bad for me. That Stone Rain is really setting me back. Remember, my deck really wants to get to five mana because then I can start playing out my Earth Elemental and Fire Elemental. And those are my big fatties that actually have to win me the game. Animating here. No, not animating it. Okay, I thought for a moment he was. Yeah, he is animating the factory, attacking with both. Looks like... I'm not really quite sure what I blocked there. That went so quick. I think I blocked the Atok, took two damage from the Mishra's Factory, playing Flying Carpet here. So four to cast Arabian Knight's card, two and pay to give target creature flying. So that's a combo with Gravity Sphere. But in order for me to make this combo work, I need a Fire Elemental, I need an Earth Elemental. And <laughs> yeah, I'm really hoping to draw into some lands because I'm kind of stuck on lands here. And look at my opponent go, by the way, Soul Ring. Uh, two mana vaults. I'm like super jealous. Again, blocking the Atok, taking two from the factory, going that to 10. Uh, okay, finding a land. This is great. Can I? Yes, I can play an elemental. So this is a fire elemental. And now the question is, am I going to block next turn, for example, the factory with the fire elemental? Because then the big risk is that my opponent may have a lightning bolt or a chain. Then again, I think I should block because every bit of direct damage that he uses is on uh, my creature it means he doesn't use it on my life total so that's actually a win for me uh oh tapping six is that a trike is he gonna play a trike tapping five instead okay untapping again what is he gonna do here oh man i can feel trike coming what is he gonna do disintegrate huge disintegrate am i dead already six eight nine that's 10. I'm dead. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Let's do uh, direct damage. I was, I was getting, I was getting somewhere. I was really happy. I was doing stuff. I was getting my elemental on the carpet. Anyway, um, <laughs> Kobus, man. Uh, thank you for, uh, for bringing your deck to Timmy Talks. And also thank you for, uh, for supporting the channel. Um, because Kobus is also a patron of Zimmy Talk, so I look forward to uh, to play against you uh, in uh, in many more matches, probably old school and also in the Timmy tournament. So uh, welcome to the channel, and I also want to thank you for uh, watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, I'm definitely gonna tweak and continue working on my holiday deck. I'm not expecting it to be like a tier one deck, but I think I've got some budget improvements that I can still make. Wall of Fires are probably the next thing that I'm gonna add. I'm gonna replace those Wall of Stones. Um, for now, I'd like to, you know, thank you for watching. If you wanna support the channel, I'm sure you do. There are a few easy things that you can actually do. They're absolutely free. You can leave a like, just click that like button. That really helps. You can leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this game. What do you think of my falling star flip? I was really, really happy with myself. I'm, I still am actually. That was a good flip, if I say so myself. Anyway, uh, you can also become a subscriber if you're not a sub yet. Uh, all that helps. I think we're now at 2300 somewhere. So I'm hoping to get to two and a half thousand um, by the end of next month. That would be really nice. And um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, of course, you can become a patron of the channel so you can support the channel financially as well if you want to help me uh, keep making these videos for you. And it already starts with $1 a month. So if you've got something to spare, please consider visiting my Patreon page. There's an info card popping up right now. Click on that card, visit the page, have a look around, have a look, see, and uh, consider joining us. We've got discords, we've got, you know, tournaments, we've got, yeah, all sorts of things. And the coolest thing of all, your name will be in the end scroll. Talking about the end scroll, let's go to it and have a look at our fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks.
Ik het als fik het als samba gezien.